The year was 2011. The PS Vita just came out. The Excited Guy at launched and took it home decided to play some... Hot Shots Golf. You open it up and power it on, excited to set it up for the first time. But instead you're greeted with a strange aquarium screen with dolphins swimming around. You can rotate it and zoom in and out, but that's it. You soon realize that your PS Vita is stuck like this. Nothing can get you out of it. It's just forever a device to look at dolphins. This might sound like a fake story you have from a friend or something. But no, it was real. There were even articles about it, multiple videos of people showing it off. The general idea was people thought it was some sort of graphics debug mode, and you were just generally advised to just send your console into Sony for them to fix it, or to just return it to the store you bought it from for like a replacement. Some time passed and people generally forgot about the Dolphin test at this point. That was until about 8 years later when the PS Vito console was hacked with the Henkaku exploit. This prompted some people to see if they could find the Dolphin mode within the PS Vita system software. However, rather quickly became apparent that it's not there. They even looked through older versions like the first ever Vita OS to be released, but it all came up empty. It was eventually realized that the Dolphin test was probably a special system software version Sony installed in the factory for testing, and the actual Dolphin test program would be contained somewhere within that firmware. It would be nice to have a copy of the firmware, but it is impossible. For you see, you can't access the home menu, so you can't access the browser, can't access Handcall 2, and can install Hankaku, and you definitely cannot dump the firmware. There is no path forward. All there is is Dolphin. Every time you power it on, just Dolphin, taunting you. So close, yet just out of reach. Ten years have passed. Still no Dolphin. 2021. No Dolphin. 2022. Still no Dolphin. 2023. This is the current year. Did you know, the Vita supports booting from an SC to Vita. This has been known for a while, but on July 30th, Mathroof was able to pull it off. He also bypassed signature checks using Gitching. This is really cool and could be useful for unbreaking Vitas as it allows you on basically anything, including like dump and restore the EMMC. Wait a minute. On November 25th, Mathroof obtains a Dolphin Vita. Begins dumping in the EMMC the same day with the SD boot method. He asked Matthew for a copy of the firmware once it was done dumping. A few hours later, Matthew sent Yi a copy of the firmware. After this, Yi then downloaded it and started streaming to YouTube, a stream where they looked into the firmware's contents and tried to find the dolphins. The first thing he noticed was that the VSL partition was completely empty. This is rather odd because the VSL partition contains some very important files for running the Vito OS. That and that we kind of just expected the Dolphin program to be a self file sitting in VSL or some other partition somewhere. Then they look at the boot config, and this was interesting because it was still coded to run shell.self at startup, but shell.self doesn't exist because there's no VSL. There was no other self files in here for it to go that boot up either. It seems the magic Dolphin Vito.self doesn't exist. Then they looked at OS0 and with very little outside help noticed a new module that we had never seen before called compatdiag.skprx. Opening this module on either it became apparent that this module seems to initialize the PSP emulator and then load some executable into the main memory of it. And in another part there is some strings that seem to match up with the OKNG OK text within this screenshot. He then extracted the PSP self file from the module and then decrypted it with PSP decrypt. Then attempted to run it with an PPSSPP. They had found the dolphins. You know, in hindsight, this whole story has been pretty crazy. Like, the whole time we were looking for a video graphics test, but in reality, it was actually a PSP emulator test. And, like, it's more of a PSP graphics test, so yeah. Also, we found this module on some OSL inactive dumps from untouched readers from the factory. So we've pretty much had this just lying around for ages, but no one noticed until Matthew went and actually dumped the firmware from one of these. 
So yeah, hindsight wheel we use 2020. <laughs> but anyway, this is a new style of video. I don't think I've ever done anything like this before. I really hope you all enjoyed it. It was a lot of effort to make it, but I'm hoping it was worth it. Anyway, so that's it for this really. Thanks. I've been wanting to see this for years and we finally have it after 12 years.